Shop Nahai. Hi, I'm Martin Yen. Welcome to Chinatown Master Technique Show. Most grocery stores in Chinatowns are normally small, with narrow aisles stacked all the way to the ceiling. On the shelves, fill the labels are in English. But you shouldn't feel discouraged. Let me help you find your way around a Chinese grocery store. Now, this is a very simple dish. I'm going to show you how to make use of some of the Chinese dry ingredients that you have never seen before, and you might never see it again unless you visit a Chinatown grocery store. Here, I have some bean curd sticks. You see this? You can tell the sun is dry. One of these, it can be stored in the pantry for at least a month, about a year or so, particularly if you put it in a nice, cool pantry. And then when you use this kind of thing, all the thing, always soak it. Now it's pliable. See this? This is not, this is, you can see the difference. Of course, everybody know this is wood ear. This is how it looks when it's dry. All the dry ingredient. I also have some dry, mush, uh, dry um, scallop and also dry oyster. And of course, dry shiitake mushroom. A lot of dry stuff, okay? So it's dry and dry. But I also serve the dry one with some leftover. I have some leftover carrot. So I slice it up like this, make it look really nice. You see, it's a little like, like a little wheel like this. And that means you can actually make use of all the ingredients, dry or fresh, put it together. Look at this. Nice. And a little wheel like this. And I cut it up. One. Now these are leftovers. Now even though your recipe doesn't call for it, you can always, always incorporate some of these in your recipe. And here I also have some leftover suckling pig, or you can use rose pig, the rose whole pig in Chinatown. I have some leftover from two weeks ago. And I put it in the freezer. I take it out and I use it. I have some bok choy. Now we're ready to cook. First, I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil here and heat this up. Now, before you use any dry scallop and dry oyster, you've got to soak them until they are somewhat rehydrated, and you steam them for at least an hour and a half. Now, look at this. This is steamed for an hour and a half. Let me show you the difference, okay? This is the steamed one, nice and soft, okay? I'm going to put it right over here, and this is the, oh, this is, you know what it is? It's wonderful huh? oyster, dry oyster. We we'll also show you the difference, okay? Here, this is the regular one. Look at this. You see? Ah, huh? look at this. I press this, and the whole thing <laughs> falls apart. This is steam, so we're gonna use this too. And then we're gonna use some oyster. Also, the difference. This is the oyster. Look at this. You see? Very brittle. If you crush it, okay? So that's the reason why you have to soak it. Now, we are ready. The first thing we do is put the leftover barbecue pig or suckling pig and ginger. Put it right here. Oh, stir. Get the flavor out because this will flavor all our other ingredients. And then you put shiitake mushroom, wood ear, scallop, and bean curd steak. Put it right all in here. Mmm. Very good. In fact, you know what? I'm going to use another piece of scallop. Look at that. This is another piece. I literally crush it like that. Look at that. Very easy. I like to use a tiny bit of oyster. Why oyster? I use the juice too. I use the juice for both of these. Oh, to brace it. You know why? I call this bowl of prosperity. That's why I'm cooking for you. A bowl of prosperity. And the reason why is Prosperity is because oyster means good business. Ah, that's why this is what I'm doing. Full of prosperity. And I let it brace, and I put it right over here. This is cabbage, head cabbage, some baby bok choy, okay? And then I am going to put uh, enough broth, okay? I'm putting enough broth, and the great thing about this is you can let it brace in this bamboo steamer lid too. You just cover up like that. In the meantime, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Very interesting. Talking about dry ingredient, talking about exotic ingredient, traditional ingredient. The Chinese have been using this for hundreds and thousands of years. Some of these are more familiar. You can identify some of them. You can never identify unless you walk around Chinatown, go to those uh, dry grocery stores, only specialized in dry ingredient. Everybody know what this is. This is dry oyster, big oyster. This is the small dry oyster, scallop. This is dehydrated mussel, 
small abalone. This is the big abalone. This one can be very expensive. Now, this is cheaper. This is $400 a piece. $400 Canadian a piece. This is sea cucumber. Very hard. You see? <laughs> you can kill people with that thing. And then this is fish maw. This is the raw fish maw. Seahorse. This is the same thing, fish maw, but this is big. Pop up like this. You can deep fry or you can pick and they pop up. It's all the ingredient. Now, in the meantime, we're going to get ready to see whether this is ready or not. Oh, this is almost ready. And then we, all we have to do is thicken this up. Look at this. We're going to thicken this up. Make sure, toss it around. Thicken this up. Okay. Mm, very nice. Thicken this up. Thicken this up. And the whole thing is prosperity. The most important thing is don't overcook any of the vegetables. Particularly, this is good. You can cook this ahead of time. And when you're ready, you serve it. And uh, this is a whole bowl. I call it a bowl of prosperity because it's got all kind of wonderful food. And then finally, once again, thicken it one more time. Because sometimes when you have a lot of liquid like this, you need a little bit thicker. Always, always stir this. Mm. Always, always stir this. Mmm, look at this, it's beautiful. And then, do the flavoring. Tiny bit of hoisin sauce, tiny bit of oyster sauce, tiny bit of soy sauce. Very, very easy. Dark soy, look at that, beautiful. And then, you are ready to serve this. This is a whole bowl, and it's so beautiful. And it's very flavorful, you know why? Because the oyster, actually, Flavor, oyster and scallop flavor my dish and make my dish taste very good and serve the whole thing right here. Let me show you. Huh? This is what we have here. I'm offering you a bowl of prosperity. I'm cutting up some napa cabbage. To make a dish in honor of my grandmother, my mother. I call it Grandma Yen's Dry Shrimp and Napa Cabbage. Now, if you live in Napa, uh, Napa Valley, California, I guarantee you, you never see this Napa Cabbage growing anywhere unless you go to the grocery store. And this is Napa Cabbage. I, in fact, I'm going to add a little bit more. This is, when I was growing up, this is a dish my mother always cooked. So the first thing I do is show you how easy it is. And it's also a very easy dish to do. That's the reason why I want to introduce you to your family. Not only as a good family dish for the yens, but also for all the other Chinese families. Oh, look at this. Stir this a little bit. And then, nah, look at the ingredient. I put it in. I want to make, make it nice and hot, so I add a tiny bit of dry chili. Okay? And then, dry shrimp. And then... Ginger, chopped ginger. Oh, beautiful. Get the flavor out first. These are dehydrated shrimp that I soaked them in water for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I put some shiitake mushroom already soaked. You can use dry or fresh. Oh, a lot of Napa cabbage. Look at this. I'm going to put all of these. And then put some, oh, broth. Make sure you cook it. Now, Flavor very simple. That's why it's so family style. A tiny bit of light soy or dark soy would do it, okay? If you happen to like it. Otherwise, you don't even have to add, oh, soy sauce. I'm going to let it cover and cook for a few seconds. In the meantime, I'm going to get some ginger ready too. Extra ginger. Here's a piece of ginger. I peel it. Now, you may ask me, Martin, how can you choose wonderful fresh ginger? <coughs> Minced ginger. Very simple. When you choose ginger, look at this piece of ginger, okay? I have two pieces of ginger here. One is nice and shiny, firm. And you can tell this is a very, very firm, shiny. No sign of dehydration and also no molding. This is a piece of very fresh ginger. I grow it in my bed yard back there. Now, this is a little bit sign of dehydration. That means this piece of ginger have been a little bit older than this. Always buy the freshest ginger. Don't buy the whole hand. Just buy this much. That's all you need for the next two days or three days. Now. A lot of times you go to a grocery store in Chinatown, you notice there are grocery stores specialized in fish, fresh fish. The grocery store are specialized in uh, uh, produce. There are also grocery stores specialized in canned goods and dry things. Ah, but there are also specialty grocery stores that specialize in seafood, dry seafood. Look at this. I have dry shrimp. This is also dry shrimp, except it's slightly smaller. Different size of dry shrimp. This is even baby dry shrimp. 
This is silver fish, dry. This little baby anchovies, look at this, different size of anchovies. And this is the bonito, you see this? Bonito, and you buy little bags like this. Ah, this is all little fish. They cut it up and dry it up. You see, this is the fish. They cut it open up and dry it. This is the wonderful regular fish. You can use sea bass or fresh water. And this is the sardines. And this is the yellow cocker right here. And this is, ha, huh, you can have either squid or cuttlefish or octopus. They're all dry. You have to rehydrate all of these when you use it. So this is how to, nice and pliable. This is very firm. This is very, very firm. You have to, any of these, particularly all of these fish, you have to dehydrate it, rehydrate it before you use it. I think this is getting ready. You do not want to overcook them, okay? This is really nice, very simple. You know what, I will throw in a couple of extra shrimp, you know, because I love shrimp, okay? And then we're gonna quickly thicken this up, okay? Now, you can actually cook it much longer, but I like the texture of the napper cabbage to be a little bit crunchy, okay? That's the reason why I want to do it this way. Mmm, let it stir, and then put the plate right here and get ready to serve our dish. I love it. You see this? This is such a simple dish. Everybody can do it for their family because this is what I do for my family. So make sure you do it for your family. Mm, look at this. Very simple, very easy to do. Here is what you have here. And of course, give a little touch of color. Okay? That's all you have. Hey, Grandma Yin's dry shroom, napa cabbage. With this bok choy, we'll make home-cooked dry bok choy soup. Now, everybody know bok choy and baby bok choy. Bok means white, white cabbage, okay? Now, this is also bok choy, except this is dehydrated bok choy. The Chinese call choy gone, dry bok choy. And then, of course, I'm going to use this to make a dish everybody would love because you go to a Chinese restaurant, this is soup of the day a lot of the time. This is soup of the day with bok choy and a lot of Chinese mitchu day and everything. Let me show you all the ingredients I'm going to be using. I have bok choy, lightly rehydrated bok choy already, see, already rehydrated. And then I also use a few ingredients, fix, this is fix, you see this? Fix is good, this is good for your lung as well as for your throat. And the Mitchell day add flavor as well as good for your throat. And then of course, this is, ah, you know, this is, you know what this is? This is ah, Li Chi, this long end, we'll also use long end, we'll put it right here. And then also, use a light, tiny bit of Law Horn Go. All you have to do is use a tiny bit of this and little piece of this inside. Too much is too strong. I'm gonna put all of these on top of that. We're gonna put some pork, or you can use any meat. When this is boiling, you put the meat right in here, you see? You can water blanch this, or you can just throw it in like that. You put all of these ingredients, the Law Horn Go, the long end, the mutual day, the fix. Mm. In fact, I'm gonna use a little more fix. I love fix, it gives the sweetness to it, okay? Mm. Let us bring to a boil, okay? On top of this, you know what else I want? I wanna put in something that a lot of people probably have never seen before. This is the Chinese almond, look at this. The Chinese almond, northern almond or southern, they're very small. The southern almond is a little bit bitter, the northern one is not. So we put the almond also, in here and let the whole thing bring to a boil over medium heat for about two hours up to three hours. So this is soup of the day from a lot of Chinese restaurant, okay? Now, why we're bringing this to a boil? I want to introduce you to a few things that a lot of people have never seen before unless you go to a Chinese grocery store. So a lot of Chinese dehydrated ingredient uh, is, can be expensive, particularly seafood, but the others are not ex expensive. And of course, for thousands of years, there's no electricity, no refrigeration. The Chinese, just like many people around the world, learn how to dehydrate the food by sun drying. This is watercress. This is also watercress. This is bok choy. This is fresh. This is dry. This is tangerine peel. They're all dry ingredients. You can buy in a grocery store. Dry bamboo shoot. This is the big dry bamboo shoot. You can tell the shape, okay? And then, of course, this is seaweed. Huh? This is seaweed. This is dehydrated. And this is rehydrated, that means soft and it's hard. Now, look at this. This 
is water crest. Look at the difference, okay? All of this you can use it. And of course, here we have Mitchell Day fix. This is the uh, a lot of this is the fruit. This is persimmon. This is Lohan Gao, Long Yan, Red Day, and Lotus Seed, and Os Cause. This is the almond. And I'm going to show you why I'm doing this. I have done this ahead of time. And I have all the ingredients here. And one of these is, of course, the dry. Oh, look at this. This is the dry. Mm, this is so much. I just put enough of these over here. This is the dry. Mm, too long. And I put some broth over here. And inside here, in this pot, I have all of these wonderful ingredients. This is what we have here. We have all of these. This, I just put it in. I'm going to serve all of these. Because some people, they love to serve these along with it. So we're going to put this in here and serve this soup. And you know what we have? Home-cooked dry bok choy soup. Ah, I'm going to show you how to make one of your favorite mushu vegetable. And of course, no meat, all vegetable. Cut this up, some egg, omelet. Put it all together, put it right here. And I have a lot of ingredients here. I have wood ear, I have shiitake mushroom, I have bamboo pith, also dry. And also I have some wonderful gluten, also dehydrated or fresh. And you put them all together. And you put it right here, this is bamboo pith. And I cut this in half, and I cut into half again, and I go, and I put them all together. Give it a nice, wonderful, crunchy texture. And also, hey, how about some extra wood ear and cow ear too. And then, of course, mushroom. And I put it right here, and then we're gonna start making this mushu vegetable. First, put a tiny, tiny bit of oil, Vegetable oil, soybean oil. Move them around. And then you put all of these ingredients right here. Very simple. All the ingredients. Cabbage, everything. Golden lily bud. Oh, look at the color. This is a very healthy dish. Light, no cholesterol. Mmm. I'm going to show you how easy this is. Let this is a vegetarian broth made with mushrooms. Mmm. Let it braise for a little while. And then also put a tiny bit of cellophane noodle for extra protein. How about some mung bean noodles? Okay. Mung bean noodles, very good. It's a lot of protein, okay? And we'll put this over here. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a tiny bit of extra water, okay? Get a tiny bit of extra water right here. Mm, let it braise a little bit, okay, and then a tiny bit of salt, a tiny bit of pepper, and a tiny bit of soy sauce, let it braise, you know. Now, if you want more vegetable, no problem, you know what, hey, how about some extra cabbage, just cut a little head cabbage, just throw it in, throw in the extra cabbage. And if you want to make it even more interesting, how about some Chinese blueberry? This is soaked in water. Give some color and wonderful. Uh, this is supposed to be good for your eye. Okay, this is very good. So we also put this over here. Now, as I said, for years and years and centuries, the Chinese don't have refrigerators, so they have to preserve the food. So they preserve the seafood, they preserve a lot of the, the dry fungus, and also a variety, a variety of vegetables. And this is the dry fungus. A lot of those you have seen, a lot of those you may not have seen it again. This, is, of course, is cloud ear, okay? And wood ear, bigger. Shiitake mushroom, all of this, before you use it, make sure you soak them in water, cold or warm water, for at least half an hour until they soften. These are also shiitake mushroom, okay? This one is more expensive than this one. We've got flowery pattern. This is more expensive than this one. And then this is, of course, a snow fungus. And this is bamboo. This is bamboo shoot I already showed you earlier. Now, this is golden lily. This is the lily bud, nice and sweet. I put it in my mushu vegetable. You soak them, you tie them in a knot like this, you see? Tie them in two knots like this. And, of course, the fungus. Now, this is interesting. You see, this one 
and this one is the same, except this one is called the bamboo fungus, uh, a bamboo pith. This is actually joksang in Chinese. In the old days, only the imperial, fam imperial family can, can do this. Now that they farm this, and it's nice and soft and moist. And you can even stuff with something, okay? And I cut this up, and I cut this up, and I put them right over here. Now, I think I like to have some extra <laughs> color. So I would like to have some uh, red bell pepper, okay? Oh, I would like to have some red pepper like this. And I cut this up, and I cut it in half, and I go... Oh, put them all together. And you know what? We are ready to show you how to serve, okay? First, I have some mandarin pancake here, which you can make that ahead of time. Some hoisin sauce. And then this dish is ready. Mmm, look at this. Very, very nice. And I put this whole thing right over here, okay? Mmm. And then I'll show you. With a tiny bit of hoisin sauce, with a tiny bit of these mushu vegetable, and you wrap this up. Mmm, it's so delicious. I want to serve it to you. Look at this mushu vegetables. You know, when you know what you're doing, a trip to a local Chinese grocery store can be an exciting sensory as well as a culinary adventure. I'm Martin Yen, and you'll find me next to all the dry seafoods in your local Chinese grocery store. Jai Jian, I will see you in the store.